Hello, I'm David Hibbert of Destiny Apostolic Ministries located in the Montreal region. I was formerly a very strong, stubborn atheist until I had a personal encounter with the Spirit of God. And in a moment, my whole life, my whole worldview completely changed. And I suddenly became a strong believer in the truths as recorded in the Bible. You know, I believe that when a person comes to Christ, that, that the Holy Spirit, who is also called the Spirit of Truth, comes to reside in that person. And as the Spirit of Truth, he gives us the ability to have confidence in the truth as recorded in the Bible. However, over the years, as we hear more and more people argue against the truths of, uh, in the Bible, it may start to erode our confidence in those truths. Thankfully, God is an incredibly gracious God and is more than willing to give us new evidence, especially right now scientific support and archaeological evidence at just the right time to reinforce our Christian faith. So today we're going to, we're going to share with you a recently uh, developed documentary video called The Red Sea Crossing with Kevin Fisher, who's the founder of Archaeology uh, Discovered. As confidence in the Bible account of the Red Sea crossing is eroding, God is using a number of men and women to bring new evidence to support the accuracy of the biblical account. And you, I can promise you, you are going to be amazed as you see pictures of exactly where the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, and you're going to see pictures and even videos of the archaeological evidence uh, that has recently been found that completely support the biblical account. So be encouraged, but also I encourage you to share this video with your friends and let them also be encouraged with the truth. God bless you. Please enjoy. And welcome back to Shabbat Night Live. We are continuing with our guests. We have a ton of great things to talk about with Kevin Fisher. Kevin, you are the president of Ark Discovery International. Your website is arkdiscovery.com. Obviously, we're going to talk about Ark things coming up, uh, yes. Ark of the Covenant, Noah's Ark, and we've talked about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah in our last episode. Today, we're going to be talking mainly about, in this section, the Red Sea Crossing something that's close to Michael's heart. Uh, we've got a photo of it behind us, and you have a video you'd like to share with us, uh, and you're going to tell us what's going on there. Yes. Before we start the video, we have a map here of the Sinai Peninsula, Okay. where the children of Israel, they left Egypt proper, which will be over in the Cairo area, for instance, and they traveled east across the Sinai, and then they were told to turn south, which that brought them down through the Wadi Watur, through the mountains, and then the Wadi Watur emptied out onto this large beach that we see on the east side of the Sinai Peninsula and, and the western, is, western edge of the Gulf of Aqaba. And that is Nueva. That's Nueva, and that's where we're headed to. That's the Red Sea Crossing site. So in our video here, we're going to go down to Nueva from two different directions. We'll first start out here in Cairo, and then uh, from there, we'll head over to Nueva. And then in the second part of the video, We'll be heading down from Elat, Israel, down to Nuevo. So here we're starting out in Cairo, and we're driving through the city here. You can see it's quite large. You see the minarets and so forth in the background. So you're literally going to take us to Sinai in your yes, car? Yes, yes. All right, this is great. This is the route. We're going to actually travel almost the route that the children of Israel took, crossing the Sinai and going over to the Red Sea crossing. Here in the background, you can see a large ancient castle there in Cairo. Of course, they have a lot of history compared to the United States. Yes, um, hundreds and hundreds of yeah. years, if not thousands, yes. obviously thousands of years there. And so there's a mosque that we're driving by. Our taxi's taking us to our hotel at this point. But uh, again, more of this large ancient castle there. And so the next morning from atop our hotel, we're looking down on the streets there in Cairo and you can see the old world and the new world together. We see this donkey cart next to the traffic zooming by. and uh, Much like what you see in Jerusalem with the old, yes, and, old and new city. Yes, yeah. right. 
so the, the poor and, uh, and then the rich, you know, also. So uh, from here, we're going to be taking a look across the city. From this vantage point, you can look across the city here. And atop these type of condos they have there, apartments, a lot of the locals would bring animals on top of the rooftop. Why, why did they do that? Such as chickens and goats. Okay. So on top of these apartments, you can look down and see goats and chickens, and you can hear them. Here you are in a city, and you can hear <laughs> you know, chickens and goats, and here you can see a goat here on top of the building. Uh, Pasture on the rooftop. Yes, okay. and so you know, they, uh, <laughs> from trash, a lot of these goats, they feed them trash. So from okay. trash, they end up with milk and, and meat, you know, if they slaughter the animal. Lovely. But yeah, <laughs> exactly, <milk>. right. <laughs> And so from here, we're going to look south, and in the distance, as we zoom in, we can see the pyramids at Giza, the Great Pyramid, mm. and so forth, right here next to the city. It's quite amazing that you can see the pyramids right next to the city from that a distance. That is quite a sight. Yeah. So uh, a lot of history here going back. And so we're headed south. We can see the Bent Pyramid in the distance. We got our taxi taking us down to the Step Pyramid, and there it is. This is the pyramid that Joseph built, Why Wyatt thought. And the National Geographic, they mentioned some inscriptions along the Nile River where it mentioned that Imhotep had saved his country from a seven-year famine. Hmm. So does that sound kind of like Joseph? That is a little familiar, isn't yes. it? So Imhotep built this pyramid. It's considered the first and oldest pyramid in Egypt. Wow. He built it for his king, Zoser. But at this complex are some underground vertical silos which held grain. You know, during the seven years of plenty, they had to store the grain someplace. So a great place to store it would be underground where it's cooler. You know, the grain would last longer. And so at this complex here are a series of underground vertical silos. Now they had to bring the grain up, and so there's one exit point for these silos. And this is the exit point where they would go down and get the first grain out. The first grain that went in came out first, first in, first out. And so they went down these steps and carried the grain up in you know, bags of grain. So Joseph was able to save his country. So uh, the from ancient, uh, ancient best before date system. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, this made you know Egypt very rich. The mm -hmm. sale of the grain. So in our graphic again here, the map, we're going to go across the Sinai, and we're going to turn south and go through the mountains to the Red Sea crossing site. That's our destination. But uh, you know, Solomon's seaport was on the northern tip of the Gulf of Aqaba at Elat, according to 1 Kings 9.26, and it termed this body of water as Yam Suf, or the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. That is the body of water we're heading over to, the Gulf of Aqaba. And as we're heading east out of Cairo, we're taking our taxi, and we encounter the uh, Suez Canal that we've all heard of. And Along the way here, we have to go underneath the Suez Canal. There's a tunnel going underneath the Suez. It's over a mile in length. Uh, That's one way of uh, going through the waters on dry ground, yes, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> so uh, our driver's taking us through the tunnel here, and we've got an abbreviated video segment of it as we enter. And it's a quite nice, but it is a small you know, two-lane tunnel. But then we come out the other side after driving over a mile, and we have just left Africa, and we're now in Asia. And we're going to go across the Sinai Peninsula, similar to the route that the children of Israel took. And Albeit not on asphalt. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> right. Along the way, we saw this truck in front of us that said, I love Jesus. Of course, we're in a Muslim country. But uh, we thought that was interesting. That's very gutsy. In uh, yeah, Muslim Muslim right, right. And so we went through some checkpoints on the way, going through. Were you ever questioned about your video uh, along the way by those in the checkpoints? Well, usually our driver would tell us to put the cameras down. <laughs> Probably yeah. a wise choice. Yeah, <laughs> right. 
We don't want to be hauled off to jail. No. So along the way, you see the, all the flat terrain. You know, this would enable them to travel more quickly across the Sinai. You know, they want to get out of Dodge as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And three million people in tow, if not yes, more. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So again, we're taking a video of different segments along the way. Again, you see the flat terrain as we're heading further east. And again, this may be an area where we kind of headed south. And again, you see a really flat area where the children of Israel would have journeyed through here. They would have never suspected that they would be entangled in the desert, as the word says, uh, encountering an Awadi Watir after seeing yes, this. I'm sure a lot of the men that knew the area, when they turned south, they became concerned, you know, where is Moses taking us? Right. But uh, Well, as Michael Rood points out in his video, Nueva, in the beach, you're, you're pretty much cornered. You've got yes. you know, wilderness to one direction and armies to the other. Yes, right, right. And so in this area, we're getting closer to the Wadi Watur that goes through the mountains. Again, the flat, nice terrain. And here's the beginning of the Wadi Watur. It's, it's a wider area, but you see the mountains on the right and the left. Mm. And uh, plenty of room through here. It's a nice, generous, wide area. You almost wonder if they thought, great, we're going to be hidden in here, and that's, that's going to be a good thing. Yes. But uh, was not but the case. <laughs> they found out later, yeah, they came to a stop. So here's the wadi we're going to travel through to get to the large beach there. And this is where it will exit later. Mm. This is from Google Earth. Can you imagine getting millions of people through there? That would have been a feat in It itself. became tight at some point. But in the distance, we see the mountain we'll head to later in our next segment, Mount Sinai, over in Saudi Arabia. But uh, you can see the orientation of the crossing site to the Mount Sinai in this graphic here. So here we are. We're going through the Wadi Watur. We see the mountains. This is a nice wide area that we stopped. And, and it's still fairly passable here. Yes. It does not look like a threat at all. Right. But as it gets narrow, we can see here it's much narrower. And things were a bit congested. And there is nothing there. I mean, no wonder they were concerned. There's no food. There's no water. Yes. Just a bunch of rock. And right. so... And you can't go, you can't take your wagons over top of these mountains no. here. Look how steep this is. We have to remember, there's no asphalt in that day. I mean, there's no smooth road. They're feeling every bump. They're <laughs> yes. Likely twisting ankles, trying to get away yeah, so fast. Exactly. And so, winding our way through this narrow area, it gets more and more narrow. Here we make a turn through a narrow spot. And I think we may pan up at some point, and you can see how steep these large mountains are. So it says in Exodus 14, they're tangled in the land, the wilderness hath shut them in. So Exodus is telling us they're going through the Wadi Watur, they feel all shut in, they're entangled, you know, they're winding their way through these narrow mountains. And yeah, for those who argue a different crossing point, that verse would not make sense. Right. Where are they going right. to be literally entangled? Yes, and you can see how steep it is. Very steep there. We, we shot up there. And again, yep. very narrow. You're not going to go over top of these mountains. But Josephus said, For there was on each side a ridge of mountains that terminated at the sea, which were impassable by reason of their roughness, and obstructed their flight. So again, he is agreeing with what the Bible is saying about the mountains. And even with more detail that yeah, would further prove. That is terminating at the sea. Mm -hmm. And here we're getting closer to the exit point, closer to the beach where they'll come to a stop. In the distance are the end of the mountains. And this is the end of the Wadi Watur. You can see here where it's washed out recently. Mm. Now, had you wondered as you were approaching this, where did that fire come down and separate the Egyptians from We the will see evidence of it. Really? Yes. Okay. We will show that to you. So here we're getting closer to the exit point of the wadi. In the distance is the beach. And past that we can see in the distance now the water of the Gulf of Aqaba. Now there's something on that beach, uh, modern, is there not? There's some kind of, there's some buildings there. There is, and we'll see that, yes. So there's the wadi we traveled through. We're now at the beach at Nueva. And now we're going to show you the second way to get to the beach, and this would be from Israel. If you, here's a lot, 
it's Saturday evening, the day is, ev is ending, and the next morning we're going to head out through the Israeli exit point and then go over into the Egyptian border station here. And so the, the, the Taba Gateway, and we had our driver waiting for <laughs> us, ready to take us. We're heading south about 50 miles, heading down to Nueva. And this is the Israeli way. This is from Israel, yes. Okay. You can get to it from Israel. And on the left, we can see the waters of the Gulf of Aqaba. So I'm here in the back seat. We see the water. Oh, there it is there, yeah. On the left, the Gulf of Aqaba. That is the Yam Suf or Red Sea, spoken of in the Bible. There is the Pharaoh's Island built in the 11th century by the Crusaders. I guess they were controlling movement through the area. Mm. It's a very interesting castle. And here in Egypt, things are poorer compared to Israel. But a lot of vacant buildings, a lot of unemployed. But we're continuing to head south. Now, when was this video shot? This was November of 2016. Okay, so this is after all the unrest in the Arab Spring. Yes. And all the rest of it. Yes. And then there's Nueva, jutting out into the water, five miles long, three miles across. So it's hmm. large enough to hold three million people. That is larger than one imagines seeing the photos yes. from the aerial view. In the background there is the Wadi Watur we came out of, okay. emptied out onto the beach here. This is from our hotel. Hmm. And you can see the Wadi Watur right there. So this is what, uh, minus the buildings, of course, this is what the Israelites saw. Yes. When they looked back and saw yeah. the Egyptians coming. Some have called this Piharoth, mouth of the hole or canyon, hmm. which is, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a major point to make note of because you're exiting the mountains. So it may be Piharoth. And then here is sunrise the next morning. Hmm. You can see the beautiful mountains over there in Saudi Arabia and the sun coming up over the mountains. So very interesting. It's nice to be right there at the Red Sea Crossing. And here we're panning across. You can see the mountains of Saudi Arabia. So that's where they are going, but they have no idea how they're going to get across. How they're going can to you imagine it? being on that beach, looking yes. at that, saying, Moses, what have you done? No wonder they thought that we're yes. dead. Right. But of course, Moses had full faith in God, that God would do something. He didn't know exactly what, but so here we are, taking a look, heading, that's a viewing to the north. Our guide wanted us to come to his house for breakfast. He had his goats out front. Oh. <laughs> Trusty old goats to eat the trash. And so our driver here on the left, we're here at Nueva. So can people go out there like you did as on a, some kind of tour, or is this just something, an anomaly that you did and happened to find a driver who was willing to do it? Well, I don't know of any tours going there, you know, formal tours, but it's mainly individuals that are going. We had to go through like six checkpoints to get to the spot. Uh, so you've got to be dedicated. You've got to yeah. have a reason for going out yes. there. Yes, and there's so much uh, military there on the way to the new way, but it can turn off a lot of visitors, tourists, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's what one of the hotel owners said. So here, our guide was giving us some tea, and then we headed out from here. We were going to head over to the pillar that marks the spot there ah, okay. at Nueva. And you can see the poor area of town, the Bedouins living. Now this, this is the, the pillar that has been eroded over time, not yes. the ones that the Saudis found on the other side, which was pretty much intact. Right, this will be the Egyptian pillar we're heading toward. And uh, it was found lying in the water. Here we can see it in the distance next to the road in the center of the video. Oh, there it is erected there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Ron Weiss showed it to the authorities in 1978. The Israelis were occupying the Sinai Peninsula. He showed it to them. They brought it back from the water's edge and set it up in concrete, which was very nice. So today you can go there and stand beside this pillar. And that's all thanks to Ron Wyatt. Uh, yeah, <laughs> essentially. And, and Solomon, who, who erected it to start with. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so uh, the matching column on the Saudi Arabian side had Hebrew writing on it still when Ron found it in 1984 that said Solomon, Pharaoh, Yahweh, 
death, Mizram, which means Egypt, mm -hmm. um, water, Edom. So this was a marker marking the Red Sea crossing spot. And well, and this, some, someone has made their own markings on it. Yes, apparently. unfortunately. But uh, modern graffiti. But um, Solomon's Seaport, Elath, was 50 miles to the north there at modern day Elat. And so Solomon, this was his area. This was his neighborhood. And so 400 years after the fact, he had these column, columns erected to mark the spot of the Red Sea crossing. He knew full well where this event took place. So that must have been passed down from family to family. Yeah, sure. Yep. So it's a 16-foot red granite Phoenician-style column. Beautiful. And there's obviously no writing on there. That's all been washed off now. The back side of it has been eroded away. It doesn't look this nice. And that's where probably some writing was. Mm. But that is, that's a solid piece of granite. That's not like yes. the Sodom and Gomorrah limestone that we saw. This is, right. it's, uh, this is a very solid red mm -hmm. granite. It's very beautiful. So from here, we can get a look at where this is in relation to the water. It's set back. The water's a couple hundred yards away. And this is the beach here, essentially. Yeah, this is the crossing area right here where the water actually opened up. Wow. Yes. It's amazing to stand here. Now, is there uh, a definite place on the other side that we can match up as to where yes. from the beach? The column that was cut down in Saudi Arabia, the base of it is still there. Oh, okay. So if you, if you line these up, it's 13 miles across the water. Mm. Yes. So we're traveling through the local Bedouin village here. But up to the north, before we head down to the crossing site, up to the north is Migdal, or fortress, um, that is at the narrowest point where the water and mountains come together, is this fortress. And I, I imagine it was designed to limit the travelers going up and down through the beach there, heading north or south. And so this was some type of Egyptian fortress designed to co control movement through the area. And inside, the fort here, they had a nice well dug that uh, would serve the soldiers here in the nice fort. And so some of the locals were following us in here and they were showing us this well that the soldiers would have used. And some kids sitting precariously on the edge. Yeah, I'm afraid they might <laughs> fall in there. And so we can look down and we can see a little bit of the water. Mm. And so that would have served them. So this was probably Migdal. And now we're getting ready to head back south to the actual crossing site. And here you can see the beach where the waters opened up. We're standing at the exact spot. Wow. Yes, and the mountains of Saudi Arabia in the distance. Did your knees get weak sitting there? Was it, a, <laughs> was it a, a, an awesome thing to behold? It was quite old? incredible, yes, to, to be there. Mm. And so in the foreground, right in front of us here, is a melted beach where the sand and the stones were literally melted together like concrete. Really? This is not loose sand. This is a melted beach which the pillar of fire created when it stood here. So... Separating the Egyptian army yeah. from the fleeing Israelites. Yeah. So again, this is more evidence, you know, that confirms the location My here. My goodness. Now, how did you find out about that? I had heard about it, and then I, I saw it myself, you know. So here it is. You see this rock is just infused in with the sand and the little rocks there. And this is all hardened. This is like concrete. That and is amazing. Jason here is stepping on it. It's, it's very solid. This is a different area. How did the locals explain this? I asked the local, the hotel owner was here with us that we know, and he says, I've never seen this before. You know, he said his hotel's in a different area, but, you know, he was amazed at what he saw. So, uh... Well, there's the evidence right there. It's yeah, solid. right. And so a piece of it was broken off for us to look at, and you can see up close here all the little rocks and the sand. They're melted together, infused wow. by the pillar of fire. And this goes on for some ways. This isn't just one little spot. And so Ron Wyatt went, went scuba diving out there, and various things have been found in the water. You can see human femur bone that is 
coral encrusted, which would be something you would expect. And on the left here, we see a normal one. On the right, you see the coral encrusted femur from one of the soldiers. On the top left, you see a human rib cage stuck in the coral. Now, what about people who say, oh, this is just, this is table coral? It's, it's just... It, it's not, because it has metal in it. And so here's a horse's mm. hoof. It's shriveled up when they took it out of the water. Mm -hmm. It's shriveled up. So, again, we have horse parts, human parts. What are we seeing here? What is this coral? Uh... And so this is coral standing on an axle, and it has a raised center hub with spokes going outwards. Here's another round chariot with a raised center hub and then spokes going out and it's got a round shape to it. Again, it's covered in coral. Do some people say that these are just modern shipwrecks? Some people have said that, but again, this agrees totally with the design of the chariot wheels. Mm. With the raised center hub and using metal detectors, there is metal in the center. There are spokes going out. This is a four-spoke wheel with three spokes left. Four-spoke wheels, six-spoke wheels, and eight-spoke wheels are found here. Mm. Of course, using the metal detector, like he's demonstrating here, all the hubs here contain metal, and that is the design of the Egyptian chariot wheel with the metal center hub. Now, here is a gold-plated wheel. There were 600 choice chariots used in the Exodus, we're told, so you would expect to find 1,200 uh, chariot wheels here with gold, and this one is special. It's gold-plated and two or three of these were found by Mr. Wyatt. Hmm. Now we see a more shallow area where the Red Sea crossing took place. It's shallower here compared to the north and compared to the south. It's still deep. It has to be a deep area. It's 2,800 feet deep, but that gives you a 4% grade, which is manageable. Over in Saudi Arabia, you see the remains of the pillar uh, that was found there on the Saudi Arabian side. It was cut down by the Saudi authorities. It had Hebrew writing on it. We don't know where it is. But there in the Saudi waters, Vivica Ponton went scuba diving and she found this beautiful chariot wheel in the Saudi Arabian waters. So you have chariot parts on the Egyptian side, chariot parts on the Saudi Arabian side. So but it's not the crossing site. It couldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the critics would say. But uh, you know, the evidence is here. It's real. So we rented a boat and went out with a Rove, a remote operated vehicle, uh, had a 100 foot tether, and so we were gonna do some little inspecting ourselves. So for, this is a submarine camera? Yes, for okay. a few hours, and we didn't have days and weeks to do this, but we had a few hours. We rented the nice boat here to take off. We headed down toward the south end of the beach, we're headed toward that area, and you can see the waters uh, extending over to Saudi Arabia in the distance, and so were you stopped by the Saudi authorities like uh, Leonard Mueller was? They, sometimes they do. Yeah, if they <laughs> suspect you, they'll come over and see what you're up to. Mm. But uh, so now we're in the approximate area, and we're gonna we're gonna throw the drone into the water. So are you closest to what? Which land is that? We're there? close to Egypt. Close here, to Egypt. Saudi. Right. Uh, excuse me, Sinai. Okay. Peninsula. So we're getting it ready for another launching here. So here's the camera, it's got three propellers um, and it's giving us a live feed back up into the boat. And uh, so that day we were able to see something, I looked around, but we couldn't confirm that it was a chariot wheel. So here we're launching it and then here's an instant replay on board the Rove. The Rove's videoing this and so we're down in the water. So where you are is not that deep where you are right here. Right, Close it's, to the it's land. not that deep, yes. And so you can see some coral parts here. But again, coral doesn't grow on sand. That's there true. has to be it something to, to, to grow to something, on. Yes. Mm -hmm. So obviously there has to be something down there. Yes. But this area is very remote. I wouldn't imagine that it's you know, pieces from, human, uh, from modern humans because why would they be there? There's, there's nothing there. Yes. So some of these objects here may be from the uh, you know, the Pharaoh's army, we can't tell for sure. This is fascinating. So we have the, the video from the Red Sea Crossing. Thank you for showing us your, your trip down there. Uh, after the break, we are going to come back and uh, talk about Mount Sinai, what's on the other side of the Red Sea Crossing. So we look forward to that.